Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to House of the Scorpion, Chapter 19, Coming of Age. The support you guys have been showing for this series is beyond amazing. Check out my Patreon down in the description. It'll help me get some money to start improving the audio quality. My first goal is getting a new mic. I mean, you obviously don't have to support me, but it would be much appreciated, so Patreon link in the description. Link to my gaming channel also in the description if you're into that. <coughs> but without further ado, let's get right into Chapter 19, Coming of Age. El Patron's burst of energy didn't last long. Soon he was as pale and weak as ever. He rambled on about his childhood and his seven brothers and sisters who had all died young. He listened to Matt play the guitar, although the boy's fingers weren't long enough to play really complicated pieces. Matt's voice was high and sweet. An angel's voice, Celia said. <laughs> El Patron went into a quiet daze when he listened to it. Matt loved to see the old man then, with his eyes half closed and his mouth curved up in a gentle smile. It was better than any compliment. One day, Matt was singing a Spanish ballad. His voice cracked. It dropped more than an octave to produce a sound more like a braying donkey than a boy. Embarrassed, he cleared his throat and tried again. At first, the song went smoothly, but after a few moments, the same thing happened again. Matt stood up in confusion. So it has happened, murmured El Patron from his bed. I'm sorry, I'll ask Celia for cough drops, said Matt. You don't know what's wrong, do you? You're so cut off from the rest of the world, you don't know. I'll be okay tomorrow. The old man laughed, a dry, dusty sound. Ask Celia or Tamlin to explain. Just play for me without singing. That's good enough. <coughs> but, when Matt and but when Matt asked Celia later, she threw her apron over, over her face and burst into tears. What is it? What's wrong? He cried. Matt thoroughly alarmed. You've grown up, wailed Celia from behind the apron. Isn't that okay? Matt's voice to his horror boomed out like a bass drum. Of course it is, me, Vita, said Celia, wiping her eyes with, her claw, with the cloth and putting on an unconvincing smile. It's always a shock when a little lamb sprouts horns into a very big, handsome ram. But it's a good thing, darling, really it is. We must have a party to celebrate. Matt sat in his room with his guitar as he listened to Celia bang pots in the kitchen. He didn't believe it was a good thing to grow up. He could read Celia's moods no matter how many smiles she produced. He knew that underneath she was upset, and he wanted to know why. He'd become a man. No, that was wrong. Since he wasn't a boy to begin with, he couldn't turn into a man. He was an adult clone. An old memory surfaced of the doctor telling Rosa that clones went to pieces when they got older. Matt no longer feared he would actually fall apart, but what did happen? Matt felt his face for the first, time, first hint of whiskers. There's nothing except a couple bumps left over from his last bout of acne. <clears throat> Maybe it's a mistake, he thought. He attempted the ballad again and made it only through the first line before his throat betrayed him. It was extremely disappointing. His new voice wasn't nearly as good as the old one. I wonder if Maria's voice will change too, he thought. The party that night was subdued. Celia and Tamlin sat in the courtyard with glasses of champagne to celebrate Matt's new status. As a special treat, Matt was allowed one too, although Celia insisted on watering it down with lemonade. Fireflies Matt had ordered from, the ca from a catalog pulsed across the warm, humid garden. A heavy door filled the walled-in space from Celia's new and somewhat creepy plants. She said they had been ordered them from a caranda in Estelan. Suddenly, a thought struck Matt. How old am I? he asked, holding out his glass for a refill. Celia, ignoring a frown from Tamlin, poured him lemonade instead of champagne. I know I don't have a birthday like humans, Matt said, but I was born or something like it. <coughs> you were harvested, said Tamlin. His speech was slurred. He polished off a bottle by himself, and Matt realized he'd never seen the bodyguard drink alcohol before. I grew inside a cow, but she, did she give birth to me like a calf? Matt saw nothing wrong with being born in a stable. Jesus had found it perfectly acceptable. You were harvested, repeated Tamlin. He doesn't need the details, Celia said. And I say he does, roared the man, slamming his fist on the picnic table. Both Celia and Matt flinched. There's been enough damn secrecy around this place. There's been enough damn lies. Please, Celia said urgently, placing her hand on Tamlin's arm. The cameras. 
The cameras can go to blazes for all I care. Take a look, you lions spying the wretches. Here's what I think of you. The man made an extremely rude hand gesture at the black-eyed Susan Vines covering one wall. <coughs> Matt had copied that gesture once and been yelled at by Celia. Please, if you don't think of yourself, think of us. Celia had gone on her knees by the bodyguard's bench. She clasped her, clasped her hands as the way she did in prayer. Tamlin shook himself like a dog. Ah, it's the drink token. He grabbed the remaining champagne bottle and hurled it against the wall. Matt heard fragments shower over the black-eyed Susans. I'll tell you this much, lad. He hauled Matt up by the front of his shirt. Celia watched with a pale, frightened face. You were grown in that poor cow for nine months, and then you were cut out of her. You were harvested. She was sacrificed. That's the term when they used to kill a poor lab animal. Your stepmother was turned into a ruddy T-bone steak. <clears throat> he dropped Matt and backed away out of reach. It's all right, Tamlin, Celia said gen gently, and she is beside him. It's not all right. The man buried his head into his arms on the table. We're bloody lamb animals to this lot. We're only well treated until we outlive our usefulness. They won't get their way forever, Celia whispered, putting his arm around him. Timlin twisted his head until he could peer at her from the from, from his shelter of his arms. I know what you've got in mind, and it's too dangerous, he said. Celia leaned against the from him and rubbed his back with her large, gentle hands. This farm has been here for a hundred years. How many Egypts do you think are buried under their puppies? Thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Tamlin's voice was almost a groan. Don't you think that's enough? <coughs> Celia smiled at Matt as she rubbed the bodyguard's back. It was a real smile this time, and it made her beautiful in the shadowy garden light. Go to bed, me Vita, she said. I'll take a look on you later. Matt was annoyed that the two seemed to have forgotten it was his party, his coming of age. He sulked in his bedroom. He twanged to the guitar, hoping the noise would disturb the pair huddled in the garden. But after a while, his anger faded away. It was replaced by a feeling that he had overlooked something important. Hints had been as thick as fireflies in the court courtyard garden. They brightened with promise. They stayed almost long enough to show Matt that, what they were, but then, like the fireflies, they vanished. Tamlin and Celia were far too careful. <coughs> It had been like that for years. Matt knew there was vital information he was missing. It had to do with clones. He wasn't supposed to know how they were made. He wasn't supposed to know that all of them, except for him, were brain dead. Now for the hundredth time, Matt thought about why anyone would create a monster. It couldn't be to replace a beloved child. Children were loved and clones were hated. It couldn't be to have a pet. No pet resembled the horror, terrified thing Matt had seen, on the ho seen in the hospital. Matt remembered Mr. McGregor and El Patron sitting in adjoining wheelchairs after their operations. Got me a new liver, McGregor had said, patting his stomach. Went in for a set of kidneys while I was at it. He looked at Matt with those bright blue eyes that were so much like Tom's, and Matt had been revolted. <coughs> no, it couldn't be. Matt remembered the birthday party where El Patron had so suddenly recovered his mental abilities. Fetal brain implants. I must try that sometime. McGregor had said, it's done wonders for you. Don't put it off too long, El Patron had replied. You'd have to give the doctors at least five months lead time. Eight is better. <clears throat> it couldn't be. Matt pressed his hands against his temples to keep the idea inside. If he didn't think it, it wouldn't be real. But it slipped through his fingers anyway. McGregor had created a clone so he could have transplants when he needed them. The thing in the hospital had every reason to howl. And what was the source of El Patron's fetal implants? Or the piggyback heart that kept his old leaky one going? The evidence was all there. Only Matt's blindness had kept him from seeing the truth. And his unwillingness to think about it. He wasn't stupid. The clues had been there all along. The truth had been too overwhelming to bear. El Patron, too, had created clones to provide himself transplants. He was exactly the same as McGregor. No, not the same. Because I'm different. Matt thought desperately, star staring up at the ceiling of his bedroom. Celia had pasted glow-in-the-dark stars all over the surface. From the time Matt had moved into her apartment, he'd gone to sleep under faintly shining canopy of stars. Their presence soothed him and comforted him now. I'm different. I wasn't created to provide spare parts. El Patron had refused to let the doctors destroy Matt's brain. He'd protected him and given him Celia and Tamlin for company. He'd hired Mr. Ortega to teach Matt music. 
The old man took pride in the boy's accomplishments. That was not the behavior of someone who planned to murder you later. Matt consciously slowed his breathing. He'd been panting like a bird trapped inside a room. Matt had seen birds die of panic when they couldn't bear beat their way through a closed window. He had to think the situation through, reason it out. It was clear, whatever had happened to the other poor clones, that Matt was meant to be one of Matt wasn't meant to be one of them. <coughs> El Patron was moved by a motive very different than McGregor's. It was, the boy realized, simple vanity. When the old man looked at Matt, he saw himself, young, strong, and sound of mind. It was like looking into a mirror. The effect wouldn't be the same if Matt were a drooling, blubbering thing on a hospital bed. Matt clutched the pillow the way he had hugged his stuffed animals before he was too old for such things. He felt like he'd been yanked back from, yanked back from a high cliff. There was still a terrible fate of the other clones to consider. <laughs> My brothers, thought Matt. He trembled as he tried to recall his devotion to the man who had created him. El Patron loved him, but he was evil. A more evil, vicious, self-serving man could hardly be imagined, Esperanza had written in her book on the land of opium. Matt had hurled the book away violently when he read that, but Matt had been a boy then. He was a man now, or something like it. Men, Tamlin had often told him, had the courage to look things in the eye. You have a fever, cried... <coughs> cried Celia when she and Tamlin came in to say goodnight. She hurried off to make herbal tea. Tamlin stood and watched from the doorway. The silhouette of the bodyguard looked menacing, and Matt remembered he'd killed twenty children with a bomb and intended for the English Prime Minister. The man seemed to soak up the faint starlight from the ceiling. When Celia returned to with the tea, Tamlin shrugged and said, An answer to your question, lad. You're fourteen years old. Then he was off to the room in El Patron, off to his room in El Patron's heavily guarded wing of the house. End of chapter 19. <laughs> it really means a lot to me that you guys are enjoying this series. Again, check out my Patreon link in the description and my gaming channel as well. I'm currently playing some Pokemon there. <laughs> and until then, until next chapter, I will see you all next time.